fight-centric kind of comp. Yeah, we'll see what they're going to do. Honestly, I, now that I'm thinking about it, they might just go ahead and ban that Lux because Lil Ball's his favorite jungler right now. And, you know, we've seen how uh, strong he is. It, it's Mundo. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets a really strong early game advantage. Mundo is incredibly, you know, strong and uh, durable in early team fights. So Lux works perfectly against M Mundo. You can shut him down in every single early game fight. Malphite being banned out, Diana and Rengar, which means that they have a tough decision here because they can ban out Orianna, but then CLGU is going to ban out Anivia, or they can leave them both open. Take one, CLGU gets the other. It's going to be a really interesting mind game to see what they do decide to go with. Aureli, of course, being banned out. Actually, two targeted bans now towards Wicked, so they don't want him having his best top laners available. They also don't want that hard initiation from Malphite, and they are Ooh, going to Lux. ban out the Lux, so now it's up to CLGU. Do we ban out Orianna or Anivia? Which one do we give to Taipei Assassins? Well, they, they could just leave both open and then take the other. So if Taipei Assassins, if they take Orianna, it's a scary prospect because Toys is arguably the best Orianna player in the world. I mean, he is absolutely devastating. But CLGU, they could pick up Anivia in that situation. And then if Lil Balls is still running Mundo, that would actually work out very there well. We so go. you see they didn't ban it. They left it open, which means that they're looking to be taking whatever TPA isn't. Now TPA has the hard decision, which one are we going to take? Do we they take could actually take something else in this situation entirely. Let uh, CLGU make the decision, actually. And they could counterpick off of that as well. Yeah. I mean, just because Orianna's left in the pool doesn't mean they wouldn't be able to take something else in that case. Crowd is actually cheering for Anivia pickups to be hit. Maybe they want Taipei Assassins to get Orianna so that CLGU can get Anivia. But uh, I'm just going off by the percentages you see down below. Don't forget, guys, you go onto IGN.com slash IPL. Watch the stream there. You get a little vote. Uh, option there, and I yep. believe there's something involving a someone can win a computer if that yes, happens. Yes, uh, Origin PCs, which are the official PCs of IPL, so uh, definitely cool. If you guys vote, the leader of after the entire weekend will actually be given that uh, or given an Origin PC. So that's definitely big. Um, I'm curious if it's, they're, it's taking their time. Taking I mean, a while. they might grab Anivia and then you know, make Frog and consider taking that Orianna pick. And they actually go with Orianna, so just straight off. Now CLGU, they're going to be able to get that Nivea if they want it, but Toys, his Orianna play is so devastatingly strong. One of the things they could do, too, is they can leave that Anivia to the last pick because now That's they don't true. have to take That's it. True. They can wind up picking other champions like their bottom lane here to secure that they get the AD and the support that they want. Wouldn't be surprised to see Ezreal and Lulu coming out again because right. that would shut down Synergy with Orianna's command, Orianna's command Shockwave. They also could just pick up a jungler and something else and then leave the rest of the game open from TPA. They're going to have to pick a top laner. They're going to have to pick a jungler as well. And CLGEU could pick around. And a good point game. of leaving open that Anivia is... They could grab Lee Sin as well. So, you know, there is always that option. There's a number of really strong uh, guys still left. Maokai being grabbed. So, looking to put a lot of pressure on that mid lane, which is interesting because uh, Toys in that mid lane, you very rarely see him go down to ganks. He's usually one of the safest mid laners in the game. So, looking for that aggressive jungler, uh, particularly at that mid lane. It's going to be tough to see if that works out for him, but we'll see if Snoopy is primarily looking for the other lanes. Well, he could potentially go into that top lane, snowball it off if they decide to lane swap one again, or they could be going to the bottom lane, just getting that control over the jungle, over that dragon pit area. Although, having Maokai gank early, he could potentially get a level 3 gank down on Stanley. If they do wind up burning that flash from Orianna, he is not going to be as safe as he wants to be in the mid lane. Snoopy could swing around again, or depending on who Froggen picks, he picks someone aggressive like Lee Sin in that mid lane, he can pick up a kill on Orianna himself. If he picks someone a little more passive like Anivia, he's always going to have the threat of going in on a Orianna at level 6 with no flash. And then Toys, of course, is going to be put into that defensive posture. Yeah, and there's the Mundo. We're expecting it from Lil Balls. It's his number one jungler, and he can really put a lot of pressure around the map. So CLGU, they need to pick safe lanes. They already have Ezreal, uh, so that's going to work out for them. The Lulu would work out as well, but uh, the question is now, you know, I think it's going to solidify that as an Anivia pick because Anivia will be able to, you know, shut down Mundo in a lot of those team fights, just split him from the rest of the team, and then just take him out very early on. But the question is going to be, what is Wicked going to be playing in the top lane? Because he's going to need a little bit more survivability if they go with this Jarvan, we've seen Froggen play it, and it's so aggressive in that mid lane, and particularly in the early game, they could just try and beat out TPA before Mundo or Orianna can get going. The best part about this is I don't know Wicked to be a Jarvan top lane player. Jarvan can go into a 1v2 lane. Now they're hovering over Lee Sin, so I'm going to completely shut up about that. But the fact is, they still have the mind game. If they pick a Lee Sin or a Jarvan, yes, Froggen plays those, 
but it could still potentially be a top lane matchup. Wicked, of course, not really known for his Lee Sin or Jarvan. They still have the mind game potential, though. And they're hovering over this Jin Zhao for a very, very long time. So it's either a very elaborate and awesome troll, or they're just really getting our hopes up. And there's the Anivia. There's the Rumble as well. It was kind of the expected pick. Lee Sin in this situation, he'd basically be jumping into his doom against Orianna, Nunu, and Mundu. Like, it would just be certain death for him to jump in there. But Really aggressive late game now from CLG EU. Anivia on Froggen. I mean, his mechanics are incredible. TPA picking up the Caitlyn to go with that new new lane definitely makes sense. Uh, Olaf is still available. Um, you know, it's just kind of a concern for if they think he's going to be separated along with Mundo, and then maybe the rest of the team sits back. So. You know, we could see maybe a Nidalee to shut down, mm. uh, you know, Rumble or something. Uh, Olaf would make sense, though, because Olaf does very well against Rumble usually. One of the things that they could be doing here Elise, is maybe? they have the, they still have the strong team fight presence from the Oriana Command Shockwave. They have the new, new Absolute Zero, and they have Caitlyn who could stand in the back and just fire away. But one of the things they can also do is they pick up that Nidalee, they have split pushing potential. So yeah. if CLG EU but doesn't play as aggressive with this comp this time, since so they don't have the Lux, they have a Nivea. Although we did see when CLG and A was playing a little bit earlier today, they could get aggressive that Anivia and push towers down. They're probably not going to play that way. Having that Nidalee, which they're hovering Ooh. over right now, that threat of the split yeah. push, they're going to pull Anivia away from where the rest of the team can potentially go in, get a 4v4 engagement, or just push down towers. That is exactly the key. And if they went with the Olaf, that would force them into team fights that they wouldn't necessarily be able to win. They'd be running right into a dangerous situation. Or a wall. And, yeah, or a wall. <laughs> And so now, like you said, they can avoid that split push, and we all know how strong his Nidalee play is, so that's definitely going to be really aggressive. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see who the support is now, and Lulu, you know, probably uh, the main target here, but Zyra also. Zyra would completely shut down game. Mundo if they were able to take that Zyra pick. So Krepo hovering over it, taking a little while to think about it. Lulu or Zyra seem to be potential pickups. Sona wouldn't necessarily be the worst in the world either, because Sona does do very well against that support Nunu if they're going to be going into a 2v2 lane. So also if they pick up that Zyra, and TPA does want to sort of lane swap, they might not want to now that they have the Nidalee pick up. Those roots coming out from Zyra are going to be devastating. Well, and Zyra also gives them objective control. So, you know, being able to um, take control of Dragon or whatnot, but they're actually going to go with the Lulu. So they don't want to allow anyone to be burst down pretty quickly, and that's going to be one of the dangers of going up against that Orianna. Uh, but we'll see what's going to happen now, because we have a show of two of the best mid players in the game, both playing their number one champion, Orianna on Toys and Anivia on Froggen. And if you want to learn how to play these champions, I mean, there's no better opportunity, because both both of them mechanically are incredible. You might want to start taking notes now because this game is about to get underway. Taipei Assassins on the verge of elimination from IPL5. They lose this match, they go home. CLG EU, if they lose this match, they got one more try, but then if they all have a Nivea and they have some fairly good heroes on their side they like playing, well, then of course, you know, you're going to be in the low spirits going into that game number three. Regardless of the fact, though, I can see you guys at home watching the stream really are cheering for CLG EU. Yeah, it was about even before the picks. Once Frog Nivea. got Anivia, <laughs> right over to the other side. All right, so I'm going to have to be the devil's advocate here. I'm going to have to get a crowd reaction from here, seeing that who is going to want Taipei Assassins to take this to a game number three. Let me hear you guys. It's okay. It's all right, but come on, guys. CLG EU, they already won game number one. And Froggen, he's playing Anivia. So let me hear it if you want to go for CLG EU. Yeah, it's, it's pretty clear who the crowd favorite is here. What? The season two championships <laughs> might be going down in this situation, but Stanley is incredible as Nidalee. I'm, I'm kind of curious how he's going to be dealing uh, with this rumble lane, but one of the best things about Stanley is we've seen really unusual builds that no one's ever even considered working before, and he's used it against, you know, champions like Yorick, which are difficult matchups. Nidalee doesn't really have enough. She has some harass early on in Rumble, but not enough to shut him out of lane. And then Rumble's going to come out with a lot of damage. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does in that lane to try and uh, win that matchup. I'm really looking forward to seeing if Stanley picks up that spirit massage that he's gotten on Nidalee in the past couple games we've seen him play. Not only is he going to help his heal when he goes into just regular Nidalee form, even though he's going to be building as an attack damage kind of split pushing champion, if he gets that spirit massage, he's going to be reducing his cooldown so he can heal and attack more. He's of course going to be getting magic resistance in order to defend against Rumble, and that heal is going to help him heal himself even more. So we're going to have to see. Um, like you said, it's innovation across the board here. And then we have Froggen on Anivia. 
I don't know what he's going to build. We've seen him build a little bit more standard recently, but I believe there was a game where they were playing in the, the winner's bracket, uh, I believe yesterday, where he just decided he was just going to build a giant's belt and a piece of this and a piece of something else, and then they won anyway. Yeah, I mean, we've seen unusual builds from in the past, and the reason is, he's always said, if you're good enough, if you land your skill shots, then you can build whatever you want because Anivia's base damage is so high, and so oftentimes that tank works. CLGU sitting out though. If TPA actually decides to come in for this, Toys, he catches an eye on Snoopy, but if they follow up, Froggen trying to get the stun can't quite grab anyone. And so we've seen unusual builds from Froggen in the past. We've seen War Monks, we've seen Sunfire Cape, these tanky kind of builds. We've seen, you know, Doran starting off the game. It's just really whatever he wants for the current situation. And I mean, Top A Assassins almost walked into a similar situation in game number one where they gave up first blood and wound up giving it to Yellow Pete, really snowball Ezreal's the AD carry of the century in that game. Now they're being a little bit more cautious. They did poke their heads in there. Oriana, though, Toys' ball is giving them vision so they don't walk head first into these situations. Putting that in the brush near the mid lane, they do know that CLG kind of looking to put a ward down over by their raids. Are they going to give it up? Are they going to try to contest this elliptic TPA? A little bit afraid. They want to try to bait it into that brush, but Krepo's going to put it down right in front of the raids and then walk away. Yeah, both teams have Ooh, a pink not really the strongest that. level one, but Stanley wearing down Wicked a little bit. And uh, yeah, the pink ward uh, keeping an eye, making sure that they can't get any vision control. So wanting to make sure that Lil Balls, he kind of stays incognito through this game. So um, that's definitely going to be an interesting situation. But Wicked making his way down to the bot, he's actually going to be laning against Caitlyn and Nunu. So doesn't want to lane against Stanley on Nidalee. Um, you know, th just the harass might be a little bit too much for him. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see because Rumble is one of the weakest champions uh, in that 1v2 in the first couple levels. He can range farm with those harpoons, but that's going to be devastating for him to be matched up against such an aggressive lane. I think they are actually Taipei Assassin are going to be lane swapping themselves, so it is still going to be Nidalee oh, yeah. against Rumble, but BB and uh, Mistake are still looking around their own jungle. Snoopy taking a safe start at his red buff, knowing that might not be contested as hard, but it looks like CLGEU might be the ones going for an invade, and the AD and support of Taipei Assassin staying around. They're going to want to get the trap down on the crap, but having to burn the flash away. Mundo with the burning agony taken away. Does land a clear, but is blocked by Stupe. Flash forward. Are they going to be able to get away? Flash Ross and Froggen kicking up first blood there. Now Mistake's going to go down. Supe wants to get in the second kill of the game, and CLG, you are off to another great start. They were able to kite back into that Anivia stun, and that was absolutely beautiful play from CLGU. Now that he has that red buff in that mid lane, oh god, is that a scary Anivia, because he can just auto attack harass, and then whenever Toys stops for a moment to try and trade harass with him, that's when Froggen will land the stun. And so it's going to allow Anivia to just completely control this lane. He actually throws the stun out, trying to grab Toys, being worn down a little bit himself, but early blue steal from CLGU. Snoopy's in a great position. He's level three with that double buff, and he's looking for Toys. He might try a flash twisted advance. Yeah, they're gonna try to get the gang onto Ori on the mid lane. Toys knows it there. There's the flash twisted advance, but Snoopy's in tower range. Mundo Cleaver goes out, not gonna get enough damage. Flash Frost from Froggen will back them off. They have, however, burned that flash from Oriana now. It's just a little bit too much vision for Toys. He has the quick reaction time, but he's still really low. He has low mana. He doesn't have that flash anymore, so he's at a serious disadvantage for Froggen. So it was the play from Snoopy really just to completely shut down that mid lane. And now Mundo, one of his weaknesses is he's not the best mid lane dueler. Froggen's going to be completely safe in that mid lane against that uh, Mundo pick, which means that he's just going to be able to have his way with Toys. But we'll see what's uh, going to be happening in some of the rest of the lanes. The top lane seems to be pretty even so far, but CLG you pushing them pretty aggressively into that turret and then might try for a lane swap. Krepo is backing and Yellow Pete is as well. I think the story is right now, Wiggins doing a really good job against Nidalee in the bottom, even aggressively going under tower, has to burn his flash, and don't know if he really needed to, but he is going to do that just to make sure uh, he's safe. It was pretty close. One more attack, the flash <laughs> from Stanley after one more turret hit, he would have gone down. So just being a little bit too aggressive, trying to harass down Stanley and uh, really put himself in a bad spot. Snippe wants to try to come around for Toys again. Is he going to be able to get it? Double buff still taken away. Refresh blue buff. Toys still only level oh, two. Stun. Twisted advantage outside of tower range. The back going backwards. Froggen, is he going to have to pick up the kill? Auto attack is going to seal the deal. And CLGEU with a 3 to 0 lead. 3 0 over TPA. 2K gold lead this early in the game. And the red buff, it seals the fate of Toys in that mid lane. There's nothing he can do in that situation. It's such a dangerous spot for him to be in. He, they need good ward coverage. He needs to shy towards uh, the lanes that he has that ward coverage. But but now with Snoopy in an advantage too, he could get into early oracles, and he's actually circling back. He wants to hit toys or little balls if he catches them out. Yeah, little balls might be in a bad spot. Throws the Mundo Cleaver though, so Snoopy's gonna be deterred. Big story at that mid lane, Froggen is level five, and toys is level two.
That is oh. a huge experience disadvantage. Wicked getting aggressive on Stanley in the bottom lane. He's not afraid to spam his spells here, zone out Nidalee, and then wind up overheating and getting that CS at an easier rate because of the increased attack damage. And to see those little balls can try to turn this around. Yeah, and now he's stepped back for a second. Little Balls, he does see him, so he should be able to get out of there. He doesn't actually dodge that cleaver. Little Balls is going to get some quick damage. His flash is not up, but he's not. He, I think he's going to be able to get out in time. The spear going off. Stanley still going in for the kill. One more attack. Wicked turning it around, though. And Wicked so far, he's been in control of that lane just because of the uh, you know early damage that uh, Rumble has. Once he got a couple of levels on Italy, and Italy's uh, harass just was ineffectual. And that's going to be devastating if you're Taipei Assassins. Not being able to convert that into a kill. Both of those champions have to go back. They were the, they don't have a lot of gold to buy up. They're just really going back to heal, wasting time in the jungle, knowing this Snoopy could potentially gank that mid lane where Toys is level three compared to Froggen's level six. Glacial Storm is already up for Anivia. He's gonna be pushing down Toys in the tower. That critical strike from Frostbite can almost one shot a low level Loriana. Yeah, it's gonna be really devastating. So you saw he backed off for a second into uh, the shadows just to see if he could catch Toys out of position, throw the blind uh, stun there. But the ward, it helped protect him. And meanwhile, in the top lane, some quick damage from Bebe. So they're pretty safe in the top lane, but Ezreal, he should be safe enough to just range farm against that Caitlyn. But uh, we'll see. I mean, we're at the point where that Anivia pressure and Snoopy pressure could start snowballing over the rest of the map. We did see Pinks from CLGU letting Snoop. I know there's a ward in that brush, but he's going to come up anyway, show himself to let BB and Mistake know that he's there to apply some pressure. We saw him warding that blue buff. CLG is going to want to go around and take that. It won't be up for about another minute and 15 seconds or so. That could be another point just to deny more experience to both Mundo and to Oriana, as well as give that blue buff to either Snoopy or Frog, and just denying resources to Taipei Assassins, trying to keep them as far behind as possible, considering the advantages they've already gotten in this early game. And with the early kill on Malkai, I, I would expect Snoopy to be buying in early oracles, and we've seen really aggressive or, or really safe wards from Taipei Assassins, and Snoopy knows it. He keeps on walking into wards and, you know, people backing off, so if he gets that oracles, it could give him the map control to try and snowball that advantage. Frog and coming once again, he will uh, be blind this time, but Toy is seeing the ward just as it's dying, sees Froggen over the wall, and now Froggen, with this great gold lead and with a strong jungler, it means he can start trying to take all of the race in this game. Wicked getting some damage traded back on him as Stanley hits level 6, now has that cougar form. Wicked might have to be a little bit careful because Nidalee's going to be able to put out more damage than she can in just her regular form. Even a little bit of a spear, he does have to back off, chugging through some health potions as he's overheated. Only has a source of issues right now, no health potions left to his name. Might be forced out of lane in just a little bit, but we'll have to keep tabs on how that bottom slash top lane oh, goes. Oh, he's turning around and Anivia is coming down as well. Wicked chasing him right into Frog and Froggen's going to be able to catch him out. The Ignite coming down, will be able to get the wall, will he be able to get the stun? The quick damage, the burst, he flashes for it, the stun not going to hit. Stanley barely back in, he's going to be egged right underneath that turret. Fortunately, being able to back off, so those minions aren't going to be able to take him down. But Wicked in a nice advantage in that bot lane, still losing. Using the egg form, it could put a little bit of pressure on that mid lane if Toys can maybe get level 6 and then hit an ult. Well, Toys is going to be coming down by Mundo. Wants to take those raids away to try to get a little extra golden experience, but Mundo is also going to need that. Both of them are only level 5. Snoopy, though, only level 5 himself, so Mundo kind of on his way catching up, but he has gone back, Snoopy, that is, and acquired that Oracle's Elixir. Hasn't activated yet to start roaming around and clearing those wards out, but it is now available to CLG EU. And if they're roaming around this hard while those wards are available, just imagine how defensive and devastated Taipei Assassins could be if Snoopy activates it and starts clearing out the wards. Yeah, so he is waiting a second, but I think he wants to make sure Froggen's in a strong situation in that mid lane before he starts popping it. There it goes. So now he's on the ward spree. He's going to be able to clear a couple. And Little Balls, he's might get his own because he likes get, going for that early oracles, but it's going to be tough because with CLGU's early advantage, he could go down fairly quickly again, and losing that oracles could just completely shut TPA out of this game. Mistake does spy at Snoopy's coming around with the Oracles because of that ward there. Snoopy though didn't really clear it out, so he's just walking right past it. Maybe he does want his presence to be known. Ping's going down from the side of TPA, letting Little Ball's letting him know that he is there in case they want to try to do something here. They are gonna try to defend against this blue boss CLGEU moving down to steal it. Yellow Pete not really reacting to the rest of the team, but Froggen is coming up from the side, potentially wanting to try to snipe this one over the wall. TPA though, they are there as members of four, and they will actually get the buff on the toy. So Oriana getting her first advantage of the game.
Yeah, Bebe taking a little bit of harass, but being able to pick that up uh, on toys is going to be really key in that lane. Nidalee actually chasing down Wicked. He gets the Ignite. One more pounce. He's going to be able to grab this. The uh, auto attack actually missing. He misses the Spear as well. Wicked trying to turn this around. Stanley just barely able to back out of there. And so you see, once he hits that Nidalee form, I mean, it really, the Cougar damage is just way too much for Rumble, but it's, it's anyone's game in that lane. Both of them have enough damage to take the other down. One thing Stanley did was dodge the Equalizer, so he really missed a lot of the chunks of damage uh, Rumble is going to put up a yellow peak now getting slowed down by the absolute zero mistake. Maybe a little miscommunication there between him and BB is BB didn't want to go in on that one. So now Nunez ultimate is down. That could give CLGE a little bit of aggression. We saw two shot barrage being fired from yellow peak pushing the minions off the tower, dealing a little bit of damage to those champions in lane as well. So we're going to have to see if Ezreal and Lulu take this chance to go back. Are they going to go continue taking those golems that they have been to try to keep up in CS? Kale is technically ahead by a little bit, but those golems on the side of CLGE are going to even things up. Wicked being harassed a little bit from Little Balls here. He has the red buff. He's going to get the cleave as well. Wicked's flash is down. They're going to be able to uh, pursue him underneath this turret. They're turret diving for it. Stanley taking some quick damage, but they pick him up fairly easily. And Stanley with that chalice, he has a lot of damage. Meanwhile, on the top, Yellow Pete chasing down Bebe. He will be able to get some quick harass. He doesn't have his ultimate up, but the ignite is up, so a little bit lower, and Bebe might have gone down. Taipei Assassin is finally able to convert on one of those Mundo gangs, especially in the bottom lane. That's going to be good because he's getting Stanley going. Even though Mundo was the one that picked up the kill, he got the assist goal. They were able to take out Wicked. He's going to be able to actually farm safely, go back and buy items without worry of Rumble continuing to farm that lane. They are relatively even. Chalice of Harmony, and there is the Kindle Gem potentially going to be turned into that Spirit Visage we were talking about earlier. So Stanley's going to get the ball rolling into his split push Nidalee form. And of course, you can't also forget, when we're talking about Stanley's Nidalee, for some reason, he seems to have the most effective team fighting Nidalee in the world, which is something you don't hear in the same sentence. Yeah, and that, uh, Magic Resist in particular is really going to help him out in that lane, but I, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Once Wicked finishes a Haunting Guys, I, I think he's going to have enough damage, and uh, Rumble definitely has enough sticking power that he's going to be able to chase him down for a kill, but they don't even want to lane him against Stanley now, so they swap to the top, they get the first lane swap, Stanley will come back up top, but maybe this could result in an early dragon for CLGU. They have the Oracles, they can try and put some pressure here. They could do this while the TPA lanes are swapping up, Snoopy does eliminate the Ward that Stanley just put over that wall. If they decide to pressure Dragon, it might ensue in a team fight. So CLGE is going to have to be very careful about their decision making because all five members of Taipei Assassins are technically between the middle and bottom lanes. Yellow Pete pushing into the turret. He's going to back off for a second now. Lil Balls, he does have an Oracles of his own, and so, you know, that's something he always goes for, that really aggressive early Oracles. They're able to clear out a ward, but the concern is if there's an early fight, if CLGU forces a situation, Lil Balls might lose that early on, and we've seen that in a couple of the games this tournament, and that would just completely shut down TPA for a significant portion of the game. CLGU now forcing that fight. They're going to be going for this dragon, and they're in the better position to take this. This is actually a good idea. The notion that Stanley is back up in the top lane, Oriana's toys is still a little bit behind, so she's actually going to have to go back and just defend after being harassed by Rumble in that mid lane a little bit. So CLGEU taking the first global objective of the game. They do have about a 2,000 gold lead, three kills to one. No towers have really been pressured that much. This top tower is going to take a bit of damage from Stanley, but Rumble was in mid lane this entire time, has a good direct path to the top lane. He's not going to be able to get a lot of damage down on that tower. And if CLGEU keeps building on this early lead, it won't matter how strong Stanley's split push is because because CLGU is going to be able to bully their way into objectives. So, you know, they're really looking to take control of this game early on. Uh, bot lane, you know, a little bit of a disadvantage for Yellow Pete. Bebe has been very aggressive in that lane, but that's kind of what you expect a lot of, in a lot of situations from that Caitlyn pick. Getting some quick burst damage, uh, he actually gets away from that built over Peacemaker. That would have turned into an ace in the hole for maybe a kill. We see Snoopy in his jungle just taking away the red buff. Probably going to smite that one down. Froggen probably is a decent sized purse as he goes back. 138 CS, two kills and one assist. I think that's a pretty rich bird. So I had to pick up a Hextech, a revolver before he goes back to lane in addition to some wards. And Snoopy coming up in the top. He's actually caught out by a trap. So uh, Nidalee is still safe in that situation. Lil Ball's making his way down bot. Bebe getting some quick damage. He gets the pilt over Peacemaker. He's going to po uh, possibly use the ace in the hole. I'm surprised he actually didn't throw it off because it seemed like he would either get a kill or force Yellow Pete into a situation he would go down. But they just forced them off that turret and they might be able to grab this if they decide to go for it. I think with Munda down in the bottom lane, their main concern is not getting the kill but pushing that tower down so they can then potentially lane swap once again and give Stanley a lane where he could just sit back and farm for 
from basically forever. Nivia coming down here. Are they going to try to defend this tower? Yellow Pete actually getting caught with the caliber net and the ace in the hole. Froggen's going to block that one off, so there's not a lot of damage coming out. And for now, CLG's bottom tower is going to stay alive. Yeah, and you saw Froggen, rather than showing himself, he was sitting back waiting to see if he could catch someone out of position if they went in for a kill. Snoopy is up top. Stanley jumping in on Wicked, but he has the backup of Maokai. There's the twisted advance, and he's out of that cougar form. So the red buff, the knockback, they're going to have plenty of damage to take him down. And the slows as well. The flash, Wicked picks up the kill. He takes down Stanley. Stanley using the flash for the twisted and events following after. That did not work out the way he wanted to. CLGU taking yet another kill and more advantage in this game. Toy's gonna have to be careful now. He wants to take this blue buff. Snoop is in the area, Ooh. but CLGU has no eyes on that blue buff, so they're not gonna know he's taking it. He will actually get this to the save. And again, there's just too much sticking power for Nidalee to get away, but look at this bottom lane. Froggen, he's going to be laning bot versus Bebe in mistake, and then they're sending their support and uh, AD carry mid to lane against Toys. So that's gonna put Yellow Pete in a beneficial situation, but Froggen's so strong at this point, he's gonna be able to stall any waves. He walls off Bebe, so he's safe from that harass. Really impressive play just to win that lane. Whittling down on Mistake as well as keeping Bebe and the Glacial Storm. They're taking a significant amount of damage while not being able to put a lot back onto Anivia. Surprisingly, Caitlyn with her auto attack range, as long as Nuna's trying to zone out Anivia, if Anivia puts down that wall, Caitlyn's not going to be able to auto attack over and hit Anivia because of the way Nuna's playing to zone her out. So that's a little bit of a a not good combination between the two champions. And Nivia, however, did go back to get her blue buff. TPA gonna try to result in getting a tower off this, and but Frog once again coming in, barely killing the minions where the tower lives. I think it has a little less than 100 HP at this point. Yeah, and he, really, he's going to be able to shut down the aggressive push in that bottom lane as long as he's sitting there. He almost didn't get back in time. Lil Ball's coming up for the top, though. Stanley, Wicked's in a dangerous situation. The cleave does hit, but they don't want to fight him underneath that turret. And so, uh, CLG sitting back. They have a really nice 3k gold lead, and they're just you know prepared to continue to farm in these lanes and just not allow TPA to take any objectives. Lil Ball's finally doing a little bit of Mundo counter generally, something that we kept talking about. We didn't see a lot of him doing. Gotta be careful though. Krepo as well as Snoopy coming in. Ward put in the bush, but there is actually it's a pink ward from CLG EU, so they're gonna clear that one out. TPA is gonna be able to back off, but Froggen in that 1v2 lane looking to gank by himself. Yeah, he's in a dangerous spot now. Uh, Bebe actually getting some harass on him, and he, he has a long walk to the turret because he doesn't want to walk through the lane. It's kind of a choke point, and it could put him in a dangerous spot. He actually zones with the stun for a second to try and get himself back and uses a lot of mana AoE clearing those minions, but it buys him enough time to run through the river so he doesn't have to worry about them taking that turret. He's going to be able to get back in time and continue to stall that lane. Meanwhile, in mid lane, we saw Yellow Pete getting some decent harass down on toys, burn the flash away from Orianna as well as forcing him back out of that lane. Now that Yellow Pete's kind of got some free farm, he's actually behind Caitlyn, 152 compared to 117 CS. He's gonna need that farm, but one thing that Caitlyn is benefiting from this lane against Anivia is Glacial Storm keeps pushing the minions forward, she keeps taking them off the tower, so Caitlyn is just sitting back there and getting all the free farm in the world considering that Froggen is trying to keep that bottom tower alive. Yeah, they're just both AoEing into each other, and Froggen, he's missing out on those raids that he would be getting mid lane, so he's not gonna be quite as farmed as he would otherwise be, but he's still farming very effectively, and it's allowing them to get a push on the mid lane, but uh, Yellow Pete not quite catching up with uh, Caitlyn, even when he should be kind of food farming in that lane. Froggen once again coming down. He's trying to start pressuring Bebe and not allow Bebe this free farm, but there's not a lot he can do. No, unfortunately not. Just being an Ivy, he is naturally pushing that lane ever closer towards the tower. We'll be keeping that bottom lane alive for a little bit, and it will still be giving a little bit more control, and this dragon does eventually respawn because of how far pushed forward that lane is. Ivy actually trying to recall here, so Froggen is going to try to make a move on something. It's going to be now. Kerbal actually coming back down this bottom lane. I don't know if they're going to keep Anivia and Lulu down here, or if that's a signal that Ezreal is going to come back down, but it looks like Yellow Pete's still stay in mid lane to try to get farm. They're just going to put a little bit of pressure on this tower before Caitlyn gets back. Yeah, it's going to be getting pretty low, but I, I think that CLGU, they might be in a situation where they're starting to look to group up, because Maokai, he grabs the Aegis, Rumble has that Haunting guys, which is basically all he needs for his damage right now, and Stanley, even though he has a lot of magic resist, just the sheer amount of spell pen that Wicked has, it should allow him to be successful in that lane, so it's turning into kind of a farm lane top, neither of them want to get out of position, neither of them want to force an uh, inopportune fight. And so, you know, all the lanes are kind of slowing down for a second. A quick wall from Froggen in the bot, taking some quick damage against Mistake. And Krepo as well being chased down by Bebe. And Lil Balls is here. He's got a trap. Krepo has to walk around it, but Lil Balls not quite able to get in range. Froggen is able to shut them down. CLG, you might be looking to turn this one around. Yellow Pete as well as Toys moving in from the mid lane. We saw Snoopy coming into the tri brush, but TPA going to disengage from this one. Now could potentially be giving up their positioning on that bottom tower. Top lane, we did see Rumble burning the equalizer in a fight against Stanley. And 
as you mentioned something about CLG wanting to group up, if we look at every single tower on TPS side, besides that top lane, they're at half health or less. So CLG might be looking to sequentially take objectives, starting with the dragon, maybe forcing a fight, and they come out ahead, just like last game. They could get kills, they could get dragon, they can get two towers, and then TPA, they were so far behind at that point, they just never really caught up. And Froggen doesn't even give Lil Balls an opportunity to try and consider that dragon. He was sitting in the bush for a second, and he did some quick AOE, took uh, Lil Balls actually down to half life, and then dropped off the wall behind him to separate them. They're able to grab the dragon, build that into a 4k gold lead now. But uh, TPA, they're in a comfortable spot farming here. The question is, it kind of feels very similar to the previous game, where, you know, it's still a really dangerous spot for Mundo in these team fights to be running straight at the Anivia. And CLGU, they were able to take a slight lead, and then it kind of stalled off for a little bit. Both teams were comfortable sitting back and farming, and CLGU was able to take it in the end. Toys does have flash available, so if he, they do get Nivia to burn the wall in a not super beneficial spot for CLGEU, they could flash around or something, but a little more aggression. Wicked just using that equalizer not only to push the lane forward, but also get a little bit of damage on the stand lane. And Toys, in the meantime, is going to be taking his blue buff. He's really happy about the fact he's been able to come back into this game. Now, the same exact level as Frog, and Frog barely saying that a 1 HP left on that tower. And I was just going to say, you want to check out Froggen's build this game, because Tear and Chalice is pretty common, but then going for the Spirit Visage, and Will of the Ancients. He's almost able to land the stun. He does get it, but Bebe barely able to get that net out of there. And now Snoopy coming up in the top lane, trying to get it on Stanley. They're not going to want to tower dive that, but uh, that build is really strong in that lane, and it's what's allowing him to win this 2v1 bot lane. And look at the damage he's getting down by putting that critical strike frostbite onto BB. And then still have Lulu around here, so they're getting the Glitter Lances on top of the CLG EU. They want Froggen to push this tower down. They want him to turn that lane around. I don't know, after getting that Dragon, I thought they would have rotated and just started taking towers. But they seem content to just try to stall that bottom lane out, push that tower down, deny as much CS to Caitlyn as possible, and let Yellow Pete try to play catch up. Well, we saw Yellow Pete. He was struggling earlier on, but he's done a nice job of keeping even with Caitlyn so far uh, since the lane swap. So the lane swap's been very effective. Froggen, he's still out farming Orianna, but Snoopy coming in, Stanley trying to get the kill, and now they have the follow-up. There he is, Twisted Advance goes in, Wicked's really low, he is overheated, Stanley still has that flash available, so CLG is going to have to keep this one in mind, don't know if they're going to be able to take him down here, Snoopy's not going to be able to connect with the, with the Q from Ma Maokai, and it does look like that Stanley's going to be able to get away from this one, potentially Wicked might have to go back too, because he is extremely low from that fight. Yeah, Rumble, uh, he actually had to sit back for a second using the Equalizer, trying to take down Stanley the Ignite as well. He's able to back out of there, but Bebe oh, finally able tower. to take down that turret. Froggen, he can't hold it forever. Bebe just walking up and snatching it. No, Froggen deciding the blue buff is finally more important than that tower, so he is going to be acquiring this one for himself. So CLG EU actually losing the first tower of the game. That gives TPA a little bit of gold bonus to try to get them back into this game, but that could just be the signal now that that tower is down. They don't have to worry about defending that lane anymore. If Caitlyn's going to go down there and push it, they group up is uh, four or five. They still have the potential to take down that mid lane tower that Yellow Pete's been able to push Oriana back for a long time in this lane, get some pot shots off. But CLGU, they just seem content to stay split up. The only two that have really been grouping up a lot have been Snoop and ganking Stanley's nibbly against Wicked Rumble and Top Lane. Yeah, but TPA, they just finished a couple of items. So the Infinity Edge on Caitlyn, as well as some quick damage onto Oriana. So they're going to be really strong in these fights if they can catch members of CLGU out of position. TPA now sending their AD and support up into that top lane. They recognize, even though it's 23 minutes into the game, it's a very slow game. And both of them are very comfortable with sitting back and just slowly pushing. Now Stanley, he can go push the bottom lane, and TPA can try and get a couple more tur uh, turrets. CLGU is going to have to do something pretty soon in order to counteract this fact. They are playing that still safe kind of back and pass, not necessarily passive because we had Froggen pushing that bottom lane against Caitlyn and Nunu, but they're still playing the let's sit back and farm style, which is actually working out a little bit better for Taipei Assassins. Yes, CLGU got the global objective of Dragon, and they've gotten more gold that way, but when we looked at the stat statistics before, as long as Caitlyn's about 40 CS ahead of Ezreal, she's going to become coming out ahead by about 400 gold. Now she's almost 60 CS ahead of Ezreal. So all that stalling did was feed Caitlyn even more CS than Yellow Pete's Ezreal. And now the whole item behind, look at that, 6.6K gold for Ezreal, 7.4K for Caitlyn. That's the speakings of Caitlyn having an Infinity Edge and Yellow Pete's Ezreal not really finishing a major item yet. And is this a split push Froggen? Because he's going to lane against Stanley now, clearing out that wave. He wants to continue with that farm, but he actually will be able to bully him out of there. But uh, we'll see if he stays there for long. He'll probably want to group with his team. The rest of the team, pretty confident, but little balls up in the top, they might actually decide to go for this, except that Snoopy and Wicked, they're very strong underneath that turret. 
pretty sure that Mistake poked his head out from that brush and they realized that maybe someone else is coming in there. Little Balls is being very patient in that top lane brush. CLG looks like Froggen is going to continue to split push against Stanley. He is getting some decent damage down against Nidalee, but Nidalee does have Chalice of Harmony and Spirit Massage for defense there. So Froggen might not be dealing the most damage in the world considering he does have a Giant's Bell, his own Spirit Massage, and only Will of the Ancients and Chalice of Harmony to his name. And it's kind of interesting, both of these teams have kind of just made the decision that their late game team is going to be a little bit stronger than the others. TPA on the one hand, they have a very uh, strong defensive team that can either take down turrets or split push, but Snoopy coming up into the top, the quick cleanse from Bebe, he's able to get out of range and Mistakes should be able to back away from Wicked again. So we'll see which one gives as far as we go into the late game. He did burn that cleanse on the BB, however, he still has the flash available, so Snoopy tries another twisted advance, he still has the potential to kite, to kite him by netting and flashing away, so they are gonna have to be a little bit careful Little Ball's still in the mid lane, though. He did wait in the top lane for a very long time. Has gone back, acquired him an Aegis of the Legion of his own for his team. So if these teams get into a team fight, that, that benefit is kind of going to be just known what a little bit neutral as they have it on both sides. Double Will of the Ancients has been acquired, though. Wicked gone back, acquired his own after going for the Haunting Guys and Sorcerer issues. Rather than going for that Abyssal Scepter early on to continue the Magic Penetration build, he stopped and gotten some sustain for himself as well as Froggen. Yeah, and that's really going to help them in some of those team fights when they're grouping together to just poke down members and keep themselves up at full health and not have to worry about the poke that comes from Caitlyn and Oriana. So the spell vamp is going to uh, kind of counteract that a little bit. But uh, TPA getting a little bit of a pushing advantage. CLGU Wicked actually using his ultimate to just clear out the minion wave. Doesn't want to allow them to take the turret quite so quickly. And Crepo and Yellow Pete, they're just tanking this turret, trying to drop it so they can get that mid one. All right, so CLGU are going to take their first tower of the game. They finally knocked out in the middle tower. Dragon should be respawning pretty soon. Actually, it is respawned already. I just couldn't see it on the mini map there. So this could be the next point of contention. There are two members of Taipei Assassin in top lane. And four members of CLGU towards this dragon area, so they could be looking to take it. However, notifying this TPA is sending their AD and support down from that top lane. So CLGU gonna have to be a little bit wary of this. They do have a ward. Oh, they're gonna collapse on Froggen. Double ward, actually, as they do see it. Froggen, Yellow Pete actually is here, as is Snoopy. They're trying to cut them off from this. A little bit of a pink ward goes over the wall, distracting Snoopy. Flash has to be burned out from Froggen as Stanley comes up from the side. Crepo taking a lot of damage. Snoopy now towards his ultimate, only hits Yellow Pete, so the rest of CLG is still free to fight this one. True Shot Barrage sails wide to the right, not even any member of Taipei Assassins. Yellow Pete does get the Lulu ulted, but he wasn't dying to the ace in the hole anyway. But now CLGU getting pushed off their own tower, that's going to be a dragon for Taipei Assassins. Yeah, and the Oriana ultimate almost grabbing Crepo. He gets the quick flash out of there, so no one going down. But really quickly, they're worn down from the poke from TPA. TPA Stanley in particular, he was able to chase them down. They grabbed the dragon off of it, even though they weren't able to pick up any kills. So it's bringing them back even in this gold lead. It's a 3k deficit right now, but they still have that uh, split push potential, and we're starting to see Stanley be a little bit more comf uh, confident in these fights. It's a little bit scary now that Caitlyn, 278 CS compared to 216 of Ezreal. Ezreal has completed his Bloodthirster and has two of the pieces for his Trinity Force, maybe looking like he was going back and forth between the two items, but there's no stacks on there compared to the Infinity Edge and now the Zeal almost completed from BB. If he, on top of this, he has the attack speed and movement speed steroid from Nunu, so if they get into some of these team fights, CLGEU, they're not going to have the same AD damage output that Taipei Assassins does, despite keeping down so many of their members early on. Yeah, but we see CLGEU, they're grouping up. They want to uh, force a fight at this situation. Froggen can maybe grab someone. Wicked has the damage now, and now that they've completed a number of their items, they feel pretty confident in the situation. Uh, you know, they just can't allow themselves to be worn down by Taipei Assassins. But uh, TPA, they're really strong at slowing down the game. So Oriana can clear out a lot of those minion waves. Stanley can split push, and that split push is going to prevent CLGU from having an opportunity to force a fight. It's very true. We see Nidalee doing that already in that top lane. Wanted to take down the tower. Wicked's going to have to go up there and defend. So it's a 4v4 in the mid lane for CLG. And this might actually work out to CLGU's favor as they continue to pressure that mid lane. As long as Stanley's not in there, he might be one of the scary members on the side besides BB. If they can get in there and they can get a twisted advance on BB, his cleanse is now up as well as his flash though. So it's going to be hard to really root him down. They are able to catch Caitlyn though and get her out of the fight before she starts dealing immense amounts of damage to Yellow Pete as well as Snoopy and Crepo. They might be able to turn this around in mid lane. 
Yeah, and Frog and Snoopy, they were trying to pick someone off. Yellow Peak going down very quickly. The ace in the hole, almost going to take down Krepa, but he uses his ultimate to get out of there. So the quick burst damage from TBA is able to secure it. There's the kill. Actually, Bebe taking down Krepa, and now Stanley zoning CLGU. They're all stuck around this Baron pit, and TPA can force a fight. Equalizer actually was used already by Wicked, so he doesn't have this to try to re-engage everybody. Little Ball's taking a brunt of the damage there, but Mundo Cleaver will land onto Snoopy. If he goes down, that's going to be an Oracle's Elixir as well. So CLGU going to back off from this one, but Taipei Assassins, despite how far down they were in the early stages of the game, are really taking it to CLGEU at about 30 minutes. Yeah, they're able to just slowly wear them down with some of their range damage. They take down the mid turret. Stanley goes back up into the top to prevent Wicked from joining with the oh, team. Oh, Little Balls the gets stuck wall. in the wall. He gets twisted in bed. There's a eventual Maelstrom, but Frog and Zumi one picking up the kill. Absolute Zero goes down for mistake, but the CLGU is going to flash away from that one. Snoop A flashes into Stanley, though. Has to use the Q to knock him back, but Stanley's not giving up yet. Mistake and BB. Mistake's going to go down. Frog is on a rampage, but Stanley's hot in pursuit against Anivia. Is he going to go down? Snoopy wants to pick up a kill on Stanley, the though. Wall. Toys gets walled off. Frog is going to get the damage down. Flash Ross does miss. There's the command shot by Snoopy. Is down. Oracle's Lixer has been eliminated from CLGU. Frog and go forward still has egg form. BB's has to get out of here. Toys going to sacrifice himself for the greater good of that one. And CLGU coming out ahead in that fight. Krepa, you oh, got to be careful. Exhaust goes out. Yellow Pete over the wall. BB with the cleanse. Not going to hit him with the Piltover Peacemaker. Ace in the hole is still available. CLGU, they got to be careful. And once CLGU forces TPA into those uh, that jungle area, they can force those fights, and Froggen in particular can shut them down. So Yellow Pete, he's very safe as an AD carry, but Froggen's able to wall people off, pick up those stuns, and that's a really dangerous spot. So TPA, they want to fight in lanes. They don't want to fight in those tight corridor situations because that only benefits CLGU with both uh, Rumble and Anivia. So it's a really dangerous spot for them. They thought they had won the exchange, and all of a sudden, uh, CLGU coming back on that. That was just the AoE from Anivia that Uki said was the positioning in that jungle area, those tight corners, and making people get walled off. Little Balls got caught first. He got bursted down almost immediately. And he's Mundo. He's the tanky one on the team. When you get bursted down as the tanky jungler who's supposed to be the initiator and supposed to live, then you know you're fighting in a bad spot. So really great job from CLGU being able to utilize the terrain to their advantage. They came out ahead, now eight kills ahead to three. They're still only hanging on to about a two and a half thousand gold lead though. So all in all in that fight, things still kind of equalize to the point they were beforehand. Yeah, and Lil Balls, he actually rebought his oracles. Krepo buying one for CLGEU, and they're just clearing out wards around this Baron pit. Stanley almost getting slowed by Krepo. They're just kind of forcing him off right here. But uh, it's going to be dangerous if they do try and even bait a Baron. I think TPA would be pretty confident they have the Orianna to just check with the ball, but also they would be able to wall or keep in CLGEU in that pit and then maybe poke them down. We're going to have to see if CLGU is just doing a little bit of a Baron bait or if they're actually going to try to start this one. TPA, regardless of the fact, is moving up to try to contest this. They know that if CLGU takes a Baron... Stanley's caught, though. He's good. going down quickly. He has the GA and the Lulu all trying to keep him up there. Yellow Pete trying to take him down. The uh, GA will pop. He's right next to his tower. And TPA trying to group up with him. But they're zoned from EU with Frog and with the Ezreal. They're trying to take down Stanley. He almost gets back to his turret, but he does drop. No, just one more attack. Yellow Pete just barely trying to take him down. Finally grabs him and Oriana actually some quick burst almost takes down Trepo is able to pick up that kill but Frog is zoning them off once again to try and regroup as a team and that was another instance of Taipei Assassins they were about to get in a fight into this tight quarters even though they popped the GA from Stanley if he were to get away CLGE would have gladly traded it for everybody sitting in the Nivea wall in a glacial storm Little Ball's getting caught off there flash off from Frog and that's how you play it. you don't miss those ultimate goes off from Little Balls but he's running through an equalizer Snoopy takes a lot of damage from BB though drops the vengeful maelstrom and CLGE is going to retreat from behind this ball except for Frog and he wants to go into get more kills, but they are going to establish a little bit more position around Baron, but both teams are going to decide to back off this one and just settle for wards for now. Little Balls, he walks up, grabs an orb. Froggen trying to get the wall off, can't quite get him, and he's going to make his way back into that mid lane, but uh, if CLGU, if they can't burst people down when they originally get those snares, then you see TPA, they're able to retreat, they're able to heal back up or use their shields to get themselves into a nice situation, and so uh, CLGU, you know, they need to make sure that they grab one kill and then just are able to escape, are able to back out of there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Oriana has been able to kind of put a little damper on that, has picked up a couple her herself. And you're, ta you're talking about that too, that Oriana ultimate was the one thing that stops the LGU from turning on that fight and just going straight to Baron. Being able to catch them in that tight quarter, the tight quarters that worked out so well for CLGU on both of those engagements also worked against them if that Oriana ultimate's going to be catching them because they're grouped up in a little area like that tri-bush. We've seen in this tournament already, multiple teams getting stuck in that same exact corner and just absolutely melting to these AoE compositions. It's popular champions like that or Oriana they have, like the Rumble with the Equalizer and Anivia 
of course, with the Glacial Storm. These are precarious positions they're going to be in, but just look at the damage that TPA is able to output. Taking this Dragon down in basically two seconds flat as Caitlyn, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, and now Last Blister been acquired. Yeah, they do have that range damage, and they're able to take that down. But the concern is what happens when Little Balls engages in the fight, because he drops very, very quickly. So CLG, they want to force uh, TPA into situations where they can wall off those rivers. So, you know, even though they don't have the best Baron team, Rumble's really weak, Maokai adds nothing, Froggen adds nothing, they could potentially try and force a turret or something that might allow Froggen to take a wall off and maybe pick someone out of position. But the concern is if they stall at a turret, they allow TPA to get a farm advantage or split push with Stanley, or maybe even worse, they clump up trying to attack the turret and then Toys gets a really nice ult. Missile Slifter has now been acquired by Wicked, so he's going to be able to combat all the magic resistance that Taipei Assassins has been stacking against him. Guardian Angel being acquired by Toys. 350 CS compared to 364 of Froggen. Two kills compared to his four, but we can't forget that when Froggen was level six, Toys was only level three in the earlier stages of this game, so that is quite the comeback here. Guardian Angel means, of course, that he's going to wind up living twice in these engagements, so even if he dies before he can get that command shockwave off, everybody's going to be hovering around him while the Guardian Angel pop comes back up. All he needs to do is hit the R button before he dies again, and that could be the only initiation that TPA needs. Yeah, we'll see what he can do, but I mean, really, it's interesting not to go for much damage. He's just, he's expecting to hold off a lane the entire game. He wants to be able to win that lane, but uh, that survivability in team fights in particular will really help him out. And uh, we'll see if he can start to put some more pressure or if Wicked decides to start leaving. Wicked hasn't really been able to group that much, uh, you know, except for those main fights around that Baron and Blue area because Stanley is just constantly holding him out. There's only been one or two fights where he's actually been able to drop the equalizer in the middle of the team fight, not using it to initiate and having them kite away from it, or not using it in the lane before grouping up for the team engagement. So CLGU, they still have some tricks up their sleeve as well. If they're able to corner people into an area with that frog and wall, if the equalizer goes off, the glacial storm goes off, and the vengeful maelstrom from Maokai adds tax on a little bit of additional damage. True shot barrage of course is going to be an AoE spell coming out from Ezreal in addition to all this. They will be able to take down Taipei Assassins despite all the resistances they're getting it. They pop that Guardian Angel on Orianna, like you mentioned, she doesn't have a lot of damage, so she's not going to be the most useful asset to her team. TPA, though, they're just stalling out right now. They want Stanley's Guardian Angel to get back up before CLGEU tries to force an engagement on them. Little Ball's clearing some wards around the Baron Pit, so they have the vision advantage there. There's still a ward in the pit, but Caitlyn moves down bot to clear out all of that farm, keep up the farm advantage over uh, Yellow Pete, and it's actually grown to 120 at this point. So Caitlyn is incredibly, you know, farmed at this point in time. She has the Last Whisper as well, which is going to really help her against some of those frontline tanks for CLG, and the poke is going to be absolutely absurd. 13,000 gold compared to 10,000 gold. 3,000 gold advantage on Caitlyn alone. That is going to make up a large chunk. That's even more than CLG you as a team has on Taipei Assassins as a team. We can look at that. Some of the difference is going to be coming in from Froggen on that Anivia. A little bit of the difference. Wicked has a couple hundred gold over Stanley, but a lot of it is just going to be the fact that yes, they did wind up taking a dragon. Taipei Assassins have also done that, but they kept them down in the earlier stages of the game. There's a lot of wards that have been cleared out from the side of CLG EU as well. So this game might look a lot closer than it actually is a gold difference. Yeah, it's, it really is dead even at this point in time, and both teams are a little bit concerned about getting themselves caught out of position, so they can't 100% go in for fights, and both teams have a defensive enough team that they can just stall the other, so it's resulting in not a lot happening. Wicked actually starting to kind of make his way down, but moves back up into that top lane, so just wants to make sure that he's on his way if he needs to group with his team. The thing is, too, Stanley, even though he's split pushing, hasn't been able to knock down towers. What he has been doing, though, is keeping Wicked out from grouping for the rest of CLGEU, and this, I think, is what's making them a little bit timid to try to press for more towers and press for more objectives. They don't have a full 5v5 team fight like they did finally in that jungle area where they're able to wall off people, separate them, and then eventually take them down. I don't think they want to engage, and as long as Wicked's being kept busy by Stanley up there, they are not going to engage in the team fight, and Caitlyn's going to continue to snowball ahead of Ezreal, almost approaching 150 CS ahead of him. Froggen almost getting another wall, and it, it doesn't matter how strong Caitlyn is if Froggen's able to pick off that front line because he has so much damage at this point in the game. He's incredibly farmed, and you know, picking up those early kills, it puts him at the number one uh, for gold in the game. But um, you know, we'll see if he can get in range of the rest of TPA because they're all just kind of sitting back. They just want to sit and allow Stanley to sit off to the side. And so the result is both TPA and CLGEU are just sitting mid, AOE clearing minion wave after minion wave, and then kind of waiting for the other to make the first mistake. 
a little bit of a troll face on the, on the screen there. It kind of caught me off guard. I was like, what is this? But speaking of being caught off guard, Tor's getting walled out, uses the ultimate. That has absolutely no one, but Yellow Peak getting chunked away there by BB. A fail flash over the wall, but he's going to be okay for now. Stupid the eventual Maelstrom down. Little Ball's on the side, isn't getting engaged. True Shot Runs goes across the rest of Taipei Assassins. In the middle of all this, Top Tower is going to go down from Wicked Pushing. Kreppel has the ace in the hole, but Frog and Too Tanky blocks that one from Caitlyn. And that was a really close call for both sides. Yeah, Bebe, he almost had the kill, but Froggen was able to zone him off a little bit, just not quite able to finish it. TPA now moving towards this mid turret. They know a couple of them are low. They're going to try and get some quick damage. Stanley, he has that Triforce, so he has that damage now. And watch that turret drop the Rumble Ultimate, trying to force it, though. Snoopy gets in the middle of the team. Froggen being worn off by Stanley, but there's the first GA pop, and Bebe is turning it around. The wall completely zones him off, though, and CLGEU, they're able to escape all completely because of that Froggen wall. Unfortunately, Snoopy was not quite so lucky. Snoopy wound up going down. They did get the Guardian Angel from Toys, but now five members strong of Taipei Assassins looking to pressure this Baron. Four members of CLG EU are alive, but the ultimate from Rumble is down. The ultimate from Ezreal was used in that engagement, as well as Lulu. It's Taipei Assassins, even though they're really low, they feel good about this. Look at Caitlyn taking chunks out of Baron's HP like he's nothing. They take that one down very, very easy. Yeah, with this much damage in the game, it's hard to defend against that fast of a Baron. So CLG EU, they lose it. it it will give TPA some really nice split pushing potential because the HP regen they get from the Baron and the fact that now Stanley, he has that Triforce, it means he's going to be able to beat Wicked in that 1v1 matchup. But uh, we'll see if you know he can start being the difference, but it's it's going to be tough because CLGU, they haven't been able to force a fight successfully for quite some time. And TPA now, Stanley's in a great position to just win this game for them. Yeah, we're going to have to see the gold accounts across the board are all but even. So this is as dead even as it gets, Baron. Nine kills to five, still in favor of CLG EU. But the global presence of Tiape Assassins taking more dragons than CLG, getting that Baron buff off, getting the gold from that, equalizing all over the place. The huge farm advantage that Caitlyn has, 135 CS over Yellow Pete's Ezreal, really starting to shine. Ezreal has gone back, gotten that last Whisper, so now he can actually shred through some of the resistances that TPA has been building. Little Ball's getting caught out a little bit here from Frog and Twisted Advance, as well as a wall goes down. Little Ball's just stuck on the wrong side of that. Yellow Pete Arcane shift forward. They gotta be careful with Oriana Ball, though. TPA is coming back in. The Ezreal all trying to force back Bebe. He will just heal off to some of those minions. And now Stanley coming in from the side. Snoopy's way out of position. And if Oriana hits a sweet ultimate, this could be it for CLG EU. Stanley jumping Frog right into the middle caught. of the team. They almost get out of there. CLG being chased into their base. And there's the Oriana ultimate. Stanley, he po is popped on the GA. But Bebe is perfectly safe in the back line, wearing down CLG EU. No one is hitting Bebe. He does get windy. The tower is hitting him, but the rest of the team is not. Stanley's going to take down Frog. And Yellow Peak gets chunked out there by BB. Down. Goes He's gonna Wicked. get the Quadra. He's chasing down Crepo. There's Two the Quadra kill shot for Bebe. Lulu. Two shots and he's gone. Quadra kill from Taipei Assassins. Everyone from CLGU is down. And Baron, I think we're going to a deciding game number three. We are going into game number three. And CLGU had a dominant early lead, but they weren't able to finish off of it. They weren't able to pull any other advantages because TPA is one of the best defensive teams in the world. TPA forcing down the Nexus now. Once they waited for their opportunity, Froggen, it wasn't enough. They were able to just bulldoze their way past those walls, past those stuns, and TPA takes this game. Taipei Assassins tying it up 1-1 here in the loser's bracket. Whoever's going to win this game is going to stay and continue on into IPL 5. Whoever loses, they're going to go home. They're going to have a lot to think about. But regardless of the fact, we've had two amazing games now. Taipei Assassins, we mentioned it in the champion selection screen. They're probably going to go with something that is a little bit more team fight oriented. They picked up the Oriana, and somehow Stanley's Nidalee is always so good at positioning and killing the prime targets in team fights, something that you don't normally associate with a Nidalee pickup. So Taipei Assassins, they got their team fighting composition that they wanted. CLGU, they tried to stall a little bit. They had all the champions they wanted in that game. They just weren't able to use them as effectively against the way that Taipei Assassins played that game. Well, and the better thing was getting a, a good pick on toys. So they grab Oriana for him. But then also, they don't have a team that just has to dive into CLG because mm -hmm. they screwed themselves over in that first game. Having the Olaf and the Mundo, they weren't able to force their way past that Lux. And as a result, they were, the game slowed down both of them were just AOE clearing the others. It, it, there wasn't really a, a huge opportunity for either to force a fight early on. But once it happened, TPA, they had enough of a farm advantage that they were just able to bulldoze right through CLG's base. We talked about it. What did TPA have to do in the picks and bans phase? What were they going to do to their own team composition to try to come back in that game number two? Now the question is posed to CLGEU. What are they going to do to stop what Taipei Assassins has done? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something revolving that Nidalee pickup for Stanley. That could potentially be 
be banged out, but once again, that could open up towards his Orianna. And we, I can't stop saying it enough. Orianna, level three when Froggen was level six. Froggen had the largest advantage in the mid lane I've actually seen in a professional League of Legends game, and they just had toys come back into the game. He was still such a deciding factor for that entire what was it, like 40 minutes, 42 minutes and 43 yeah. seconds. You still have it up on your screen, thank you. <laughs> but, but now the concern is TP8, they're on the second pick, and mm -hmm. how are they going to get toys something that they're comfortable with? You know, will they be ha have to use that TF pick against CLGEU? Is it going to be enough? Is it going to force them into that early game aggression? Because now CLGEU, they don't have to ban Anivia. They can ban out Orianna. They can ban out uh, Diana as well and Rangar. So those three bans probably coming from CLGEU, and it's going to force TPA into a situation very similar to game number one. So we'll see what kind of happens there. But, um, you know, CLGEU, they won the first time they had first pick. TPA coming around, and now they have the momentum coming into game number three. Oh, if they do wind up banning out the Rengar, of course, then the Nidalee, the other cat in the champion pool, is going to be a very, very scary thing. I think that really did mess with CLGEU just a little bit. We kept talking about Wicked was doing doing a good job defending against the split pushing. He was doing such a great job keeping towers from falling in those lanes. Guess what? All type A assassins had to do was knock down one lane in that entire game in order to win it. So they halted the split push, but Stanley's positioning on Nidalee, it's just so immaculate that it wound up being a huge force in team fights because he was split pushing. Wicked was farming, yeah, but Stanley was farming a little bit harder. Wicked kept having to use those equalizers to stop those forces to disengage from team fights. We saw in the last fight, he dropped the equalizer as they were running away after the frogging wall just to try to disengage. But at that point in time, Stanley was pouncing onto them underneath their own turret. BB was at a very safe distance over the wall, and Mundo in the middle of everything. Even if he did keep dying, even if he did run into those engagements, that's what they were looking to do in that game, and they just executed it almost flawlessly. And it's interesting with Stanley's build, usually with Nidalee, you expect to see like a 20-minute Trinity Force. Mm -hmm. Well, he was building a 40-minute Trinity Force, but uh, the fact that he was able to get those early game items to win him that lane, it allowed him to stay in a decent situation against Wicked. He didn't have to worry about falling behind. He, he knew it was going to be a long, slow game. They were able to stretch it out, and they're able to take it home. So uh, that's it for game number two, guys. It is one-to-one -one now. We'll see what's going to happen after these commercial breaks. Who's going to take home game number three? Who's going to continue in this loser's bracket? This is IPL5. Here's an idea. Home stuff.